So I found a short piece by Truman Capote in 1955. And he wrote, I'm looking at my notes here, so excuse me, I'm turning. He wrote about an afternoon with Munro and they were at the funeral of a drama coach, Miss Collier. And he writes, with her tresses invisible and her complexion cleared of all cosmetics, she looked 12 years old, a pubescent virgin who has just been admitted to an orphanage and is grieving over her plight. This was Munro at the funeral. Then they decide they'll, they'll leave that scene and they'll go and have a bit of champagne, but she has no money to buy, so they play some bit of champagne. Then they go and walk along a pier, and she says to him, come on, really, how would you describe me in the future when people want to ask who I am, what would you say? And he said, I would describe you as a beautiful child. Don Fredrickson, who just passed away last year, which is quite sad, in his essay, Jung's Sign, Symbol and Film, uh, he's in relation to Jung's terminology, he says, one comes to realise that while symbols come from us individually, they escape our attempts to enclose them within a holy or essential personal and link us to the transpersonal. So the child, and particularly the lost child, is one such symbol in our culture. When a theme is dominant in one's life, and I've written two books about this in relation to other films, we have to ask why. So the archetype of passion and it dominates a culture, it's also wound around trauma. And he talks about the complex like this. And he says about the complex, the complex has us, we don't have it. And Jung argues that we can actually never get rid of the complex. And we shouldn't. What we should try to do is understand it and grapple with it and find meaning. So the mythologizing lost, abandoned, traumatized, and or abducted children significantly influences our storytelling. From what's called the stolen generations of indigenous children raised by white families, as alluded to in Jeddah, to elusive encounters with the self in predestination, the spirit brothers, the lost child themes significantly influence the Australian screen landscape. These stories, like mythology, amplify and guide cultural identities, then the trauma and repetition of disrupted childhood is an energy that transfixes our filmmakers and consumers, keeping audiences and the wider community held in what I argue is both the tension that inhibits collective forward movement and an inward spiraling drive for individuation and psychological maturity. Australia's immortalised cultural and screen heroes, for instance, are dominantly the lost and defeated. Unlike North America, we are not bound, not seduced by what Mikhail Gorbachev, Gorbachev once described as the victory complex. It's the lost child that drives our tail chasing the most euphoric, the snake in the talon's mouth, fixation with grief and becoming. The notion of the lost child can be clearly read into the persona of Munro. And I say persona because what we see in cinema, interviews, and even the secondary reportage or biography in various films, films and casual photography can be considered, considered acutely distant from the actual person. So I think in her more dramatic roles like The Misfits and The Disturbed and Suicidal Babysitter in Don't Bother to Knock, it's clear to see what might be interpreted as a knowing mugging of lostness, childlike irresponsibility, helplessness, cuteness, and this is amped up in the comedies. But in this genre, the little girl lost and the little girl using a child inflected sexuality to get what she wants seems played up, almost a drag act. And so a subversive and knowing hyper femininity, hyper child that signifies through its very falseness the woman beneath, who very consciously making a comment on, is, is making a comment on stereotypical femininity. That's my optimistic. I like her best in All About Eve, where this contrivance is so beautifully um, mobilised. Nonetheless, we seem to more popularly mythologise her as a woman held by a lost child complex. So Jung said, complexes have us, we don't have them. They're autonomous and notoriously difficult to shake. If we can't shake them, what he argued for is that we live with them and we change our relationship to them a thing that it seems Munro couldn't quite do. Munro potentially refers us to the child. 
reminds us of our compassion for it and its unknowability, cautious, cautions us of the need to move on, to temporarily lose the inner child, but to never abandon it. 